So you think you've got problems? The troubled Fukushima nuclear power plant's operators are facing yet more criticism. On Friday, the Tokyo Electric Power Co. released this footage of a probe from one of the reactors. But Japan's nuclear watchdog said on Monday that radioactive water is seeping into the ocean, creating an emergency TEPCO is struggling to contain. The contaminated groundwater has breached an underground barrier and is rising towards the surface, says the nuclear regulator. TEPCO has been buffeted by criticism since the March 2011 earthquake and tsunami that wrecked the Fukushima plant. Masashi Goto, a retired nuclear engineer who worked on several TEPCO plants, says the company has not been proactive in resolving the contamination crisis. He says the current situation is more than TEPCO can handle. The regulatory task force overseeing Fukushima said new measures are needed to stop the water from flowing into the sea. Each day, TEPCO pumps out 400 tonnes of groundwater that flows in from the surrounding hills to try to stop it mixing with the highly irradiated water used to cool the reactors. TEPCO now admits that tainted water is reaching the sea, saying on Friday the radioactive discharge is out of control. As they grapple with how to dismantle the shattered reactors at Fukushima, engineers are now facing a fresh emergency. The Fukushima plant sits smack in the middle of an underground aquifer. Deep beneath the ground, the site is rapidly being overwhelmed by water. Beneath the surface, water flows downhill and into the basement of the damaged reactor buildings. There it is contaminated with high levels of radiation. To stop the groundwater flowing on into the nearby ocean, engineers are building an underground barrier. But that is causing the groundwater level to rapidly rise. It's now so high the water will soon reach the surface, then it will start flowing overground into the sea. This week the company that owns Fukushima, TEPCO, made this disturbing admission. We understand that this water discharge is beyond our control, and we do not think the current situation is good. Outside experts say it's now clear TEPCO is incapable of handling the cleanup at Fukushima. It's time for the Japanese government to step in. The situation is already beyond what TEPCO can handle, he says. If it were possible to take proper measures, they would have done it already. It's not as if TEPCO is refusing to do what they can. They're doing everything they can, but there are no perfect solutions. Even if the government does step in, it's not clear what it can do. The only other solution is to pump out the contaminated groundwater and put it in storage tanks. But after just two years, the site is already jammed with more than a thousand giant tanks. Most of them are already full up. At least 400 tons of new water pours into the site every day. And it's going to continue for years and years. Fukushima's water crisis has only just begun. Rupert Wingfield Hayes, BBC News in Tokyo. Forget the problems. I'll take care of the problems. They're going to love waiting for it. It's a massacre. The operator of the Fukushima nuclear power plant says it has finally come up with a plan that it thinks will stop radioactive wastewater from leaking into the ocean. TEPCO estimates that as much as 40 trillion becquerels of radioactive tritium have flowed into the ocean since 2011. Officials from Tokyo Electric Power Company presented the plan at their first meeting with the Nuclear Regulation Authority. Plant workers have been pumping a hardening agent into an embankment in an effort to stop radioactive water from reaching the Pacific Ocean. But TEPCO officials admit underground water levels have risen since the work began in early July. They suspect the work could be causing the problem as water is flowing over the embankment. TEPCO's proposals include building a new facility to collect underground water flowing toward the seaside of the plant. The officials plan to begin pumping water in late August. NRA staff ordered TEPCO to implement the measures as quickly as possible. 
The NRA will assess the spread of radioactive materials in the ocean and its impact on the environment. Once again, Japan springs into action to make all of your augmented reality dreams come true. TEPCO admitted for the first time last month that contaminated groundwater is leaking into the sea. The vice governor of Fukushima Prefecture has asked the government to take the lead in handling the matter and stop the leakage. Masao Uchibori told an official from the Nuclear Regulation Authority that some of TEPCO's measures have increased the risk of further leaks. The official said speed is the key to deal with the problem. The vice governor said the utility needs to do more. No shit. The measures aren't enough to deal with an emergency situation. The government should make the first moves to handle the matter and produce results. That's what the people in Fukushima are hoping for. Crews trying to control Japan's damaged nuclear plant are struggling to stop more radioactive water from seeping into the sea. Managers with the operator of Fukushima Daiichi are putting a new plan in place in their effort to contain the water on site. It's another bullshit experiment. Tokyo Electric Power Company workers have already constructed underground walls to try to prevent leaks. But the contaminated groundwater has been building up behind the walls and is starting to spill over. TEPCO managers say the workers will dig a well to pump out the water and temporarily store it in an underground facility. They'd planned to start the job at the end of August, but officials with the Nuclear Regulation Authority urged them to begin as soon as possible. On Monday, TEPCO engineers detected high levels of radioactive cesium in groundwater in another area of the plant. They took the samples from a monitoring well near Reactor 2. Highly radioactive water has been accumulating in the reactor building's basement. TEPCO managers say they don't know what's causing the spikes. They say they'll do tests to find out how the radioactive water is spreading and what effects it's having on the environment. Japan's devastated nuclear plant at Fukushima is facing a new emergency due to radioactive water underground that's threatening to rise to the surface. The operator TEPCO is struggling to contain water seeping into the Pacific Ocean. It's released this video of a probe from one of the reactors. The country's nuclear regulator says a barrier has already been breached and the leak could accelerate rapidly. This retired engineer who worked on several TEPCO plants says the situation is already beyond TEPCO's control, otherwise they'd already have taken proper measures. They're doing everything they can, but there are no perfect solutions. The operator says it's taking steps to prevent the leak, but the regulator argues the measures are only temporary. The water is thought to have become contaminated after being pumped into the plant to cool reactors. Japan shut down all but two of its 50 nuclear reactors following the tsunami in 2011, but it's reportedly considering restarting some. Prime Minister Abe defended the government's position of refusing to sign the statement in Geneva. But he said that Japan is making its own efforts to rid the world of nuclear weapons. You have your calendar in the sink and just slowly pour your water into it with all your ziti and just let it sit there for a second. Abe made the remarks after he attended the Hiroshima Peace Memorial Ceremony. We regret that Japan did not sign the statement, but we would like to continue looking for ways to include ourselves in efforts for nuclear disarmament. 
contribution to disarmament. He also said Japan is taking initiatives at the United Nations to curb the use of such arms. He said that resolution led by Japan calling for future free of nuclear weapons was adopted last year at the General Assembly. You have your calendar in the sink and just slowly pour your water into it with all your ziti. Officials appointed by the Fukushima government have made an emergency visit to the damaged nuclear plant. They're investigating whether the operator of Fukushima Daiichi is doing enough to stop leaks of contaminated water, and they're unimpressed by what they found. 22 officials inspected areas of the compound where contaminated groundwater has been leaking into the sea. They assessed an underground tunnel that's believed to be filled with highly radioactive wastewater. They also monitored work that's been done to reinforce embankments between the number two reactor and the sea. Crews constructed barriers to prevent the water from reaching the ocean. Several officials voiced frustration at the way TEPCO has been handling problems. They said the utility has been reacting to issues as they rise rather than taking preventive measures. Fishermen will never have peace of mind until we know for sure that the contaminated water has been contained. Plant chief Akira Ono promise to implement whatever steps are possible. He said he would try to see the situation from the perspective of the public.
About 200 people came to an opening of a photography exhibition in Australia's capital. It commemorates the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The Australian Red Cross is organizing the event at the High Court in Canberra. The exhibition is called Memories of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, A Quest for Peace. It features images of the aftermath of the 1945 attacks. One of the Hiroshima survivors, Junko Morimoto, spoke to attendees. It has been 68 years since the bombings and there are still many conflicts in the world. Countries are still racing to build nuclear arsenals. Moriboto was 13 years old when the United States dropped the bomb on her hometown. She currently resides in Australia. I think it is really good to be reminded of the atrocity of atomic wars and how much the ordinary person suffers. We need to try to have more peace in our world. It's kind of scary and it's kind of teaching me something as well, that everyone can have peace. Morimoto said it is important for survivors to keep telling their stories. She said if they don't, she is sure people will use nuclear weapons again. Iran's new president, Hassan Rouhani, says he is seriously determined to resolve the dispute over the country's nuclear development. Rouhani gave his first news conference as president on Tuesday. He said he believes Iran and the West can reach a win-win solution. Now watch this. Look, a snake's up in the tree. Honey badger don't care. Honey badger don't give a shit. It just takes what it wants. People in Hiroshima have marked 68 years since the atomic bomb was dropped on the city. Mayor Kazumi Matsui called it the ultimate inhumane weapon. He urged the Japanese government to lead the way toward abolishing nuclear arms. About 50,000 people gathered at the Peace Memorial Park. The area is close to the epicenter of the bombing on August 6, 1945. Something like this should never happen again. I oppose any war. The participants prayed in silence at 8.15 a.m. It was the exact time the bomb was dropped. Mayor Matsui spoke of the nuclear weapons. The atomic bomb is the ultimate inhumane weapon, an absolute evil. Hiroshima calls on the Japanese government to strengthen ties with other countries to pursue abolition. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe said that Japanese people have an obligation as citizens of the only nation in the world to have been atomically bombed. We have a responsibility to make a world without nuclear weapons. People arrived at the Memorial Park throughout the day to offer prayers. They spoke about nuclear arms. I can't understand why nuclear weapons are necessary. They are designed to kill people. I am absolutely against them. Hiroshima should be the front-runner in the campaign to pursue the abolition of nuclear arms. The people of Hiroshima are remembering one of the most horrific days in history. Sixty-eight years ago, the crew of a U.S. plane dropped an atomic bomb on their city. It was the first time a nuclear device had been used in an attack. The survivors are growing old, and many are desperate to pass along their stories. NHK World's Hiro Morita reports from Hiroshima. People from Hiroshima perform this rite every year. They gather with visitors from around the world. Together, they reflect on the events for which this city is known. We want to know more, the reality of the atomic bombing, the thoughts of the survivors. We want to spread these ideas far and wide. More than 50,000 people attended the Hiroshima Peace Memorial Ceremony. They came to remember the day in 1945 when their city was destroyed. 
people here stop every year at 8.15 in the morning, the time the bomb was dropped. The bomb killed tens of thousands of people in an instant, 140,000 by the end of the year. The mayor of Hiroshima placed a list of the victims in the cenotaph. It contained the names of more than 5,800 people who died over the past year, or who are now known to have died because of the bombing. More than 280,000 people are now honored in the vault. An atomic bomb steals the lives of innocent people. It permanently alters the lives of those who survive it. It stalks their bodies to the end of their days. The atomic bomb is the ultimate inhumane weapon, an absolute evil. Matsui asked Japanese government officials to strengthen ties with other nations and lead the way toward abolishing nuclear weapons. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe said Japanese have a duty as citizens of the only country to have come under attack by atomic bombs. We have a responsibility to make a world without nuclear weapons. But Japanese leaders have not been very cooperative. Delegates from more than 70 countries met in April at a nuclear non-proliferation treaty conference in Geneva. They agreed on a statement that called nuclear weapons inhumane. Those from Japan refused to sign. Still, survivors of the bombing in Hiroshima believe if they share their experiences, people will join their push for a world free of nuclear weapons. And they hope their stories will live on. Hiro Morita, NHK World, Hiroshima. People in Japan will pause again on Friday. They and visitors from elsewhere will gather to remember the atomic bombing on the city of Nagasaki. We'll have live coverage of that memorial beginning at 10.30 a.m. Japan time. Earlier in the program, we showed you how people in Japan commemorated a painful anniversary. Thousands gathered in Hiroshima to mark the day the U.S. military dropped an atomic bomb on the city. Later this week, Nagasaki will hold a service to remember the day it was bombed. Outside of these cities, though, awareness of the attacks is fading. Members of a civic group in Tokyo are trying to change that. NHK World's Miyuki Tokoi shows us how. Music to keep the memories alive. Pianist Masakazu Uehata's improvisation was inspired not just by the atomic bombs, but by the piano itself. Made in the United States around 1920, this piano was in the city of Hiroshima when the bomb exploded. It has been preserved just the way it was, with shards of glass still embedded in its wooden surface. It really makes me feel as if the piano still remembers what happened that day. I hope my performance can convey that memory to everyone in the audience. A slideshow tells the story of the piano and its young owner. Akiko Kawamoto was a 19-year-old student living in Hiroshima. She was born in 1926 in Los Angeles, where her father was working at the time. The piano was bought to commemorate her birth. When Akiko was six, the family returned to Japan together with the piano and settled in Hiroshima. Akiko loved playing the piano more than anything else. She often wrote about it in her diary. Akiko was about one kilometer from the epicenter of the explosion, working with a student mobilization call. She died a day later from radiation exposure. Akiko's parents left her bedroom exactly the way it was when she was alive, including the piano. But recently, Akiko's brother entrusted it to a peace group so that people could hear it actually being played. 
after hearing about the piano, Uehata was keen to bring it to Tokyo for the event on Saturday. It was as though he was having a conversation with Akiko. I was thinking about the meaning of peace as I listened. It's so easy to forget things, and I think Hiroshima is something that we should never forget. So we want to keep this uh, event so that people would remember. Uehata wants everyone who hears the message of peace to talk about it with others. He believes that if nobody talks, then nothing changes. Miyuki Tokoi, NHK World, Tokyo. Many people are trying to preserve the memory of the tragedy in Hiroshima. Among them is a group of students who have recreated a virtual image of the city before it was destroyed. NHK World's Yuzo Ota reports. Just 900 meters south of the dome, Marks ground zero. Before the explosion, government buildings stood everywhere. Those structures can now be seen as computer images made by high school students. For example, the former prefecture office building and the surrounding streets. The students are learning how to make computer graphics at an industrial high school in Hiroshima Prefecture. Their teacher, Katsushi Hasegawa, is supervising them. He wants to make sure that as the older generation dies, memories of the bombing will not go with them. So, he got the students involved in a documentary about Hiroshima before the explosion. I was afraid that in the future fewer kids would know even less about the bomb. My idea was that if students replicated the old town, they would learn something. Hasegawa and the students visited the city, looking for ideas to help them with their images. There's a memorial for the people who were killed. In the Prague notes the office, that one stood here. Strolling about the area allowed me to understand the extent of the bomb damage, and that will help in producing our CG. After returning to school, the students put their research to work, and the old buildings took shape to make the graphics look more real. They decided to include people doing everyday activity. To make sure they got everything just right, the students interviewed Avon survivors. They asked all kinds of questions about life before the attack. <laughs> We learned a lot from the survivors. I want to make the images of people look as authentic as possible. But it's not easy to depict people's age or gender, or recreate the closing of the war era. Women don't take long strides like that. We're trying to make the figures look realistic, not like statues. The students never let up, keeping the people of the 1940s in mind. Finally, they finished their work. A man dressed in national uniform at the entrance to the prefecture office. On the street, a woman wearing loose work pants, typical of the era.
the information from the survivors helped make the computer images more lifelike. Before, I only knew that the atomic bomb was huge, that it destroyed the town, and many people died. But I want many people to learn what I came to know through this project. Almost seven decades after the atomic bombing, digital images simulate people as they went about their daily routine. And through this project, students get the clear idea of what was lost forever. Yuzo Ota, NHK World, Hiroshima. The next round of talks on the Trans-Pacific Partnership free trade deal is approaching. Tariff cuts will be one of the key issues. Japanese officials say they will monitor what other nations do before clarifying their stance on rice and other farm products. The Japanese officials are holding an intensive preparatory session before the talks, which start on August 22nd in Brunei. Delegates are expected to submit a list indicating their national plans on tariffs for agricultural and industrial goods. Tokyo officials are dividing products into those for immediate tariff removal and for staged cuts over time. Discussion on a third category that, that includes rice, wheat and other food products will be shelved for the time being.